I'm going to be talking about uh, Draw FPP, which is the diagramming tool for uh, flow-based programming. Um, but I thought I should say a few words about flow-based programming, as this is a different programming technology from conventional control flow. The lines in these diagrams represent data flows rather than control flow. Um, the data travels across these lines, which are connections, bounded buffers actually, uh, in chunks, which are called information packets. And um, an information packet arriving at one of these process blocks triggers the processing. These uh, process blocks um, don't correspond one to one with um, component, with uh, code blocks, as you can have more than one process block executing the same piece of code. But they are running concurrently, asynchronously, and the data flows through the network. Typically, um, in this convention, they flow roughly from left to right. But in this particular example, I have the data uh, going from left to right on the top and then going to the back end and then coming back around to the response to the there's a human at here and uh, which we can actually draw using the drawing tool something like this uh, these um, this tool of uh, draw FPP provides some um, a few extra blocks just for decoration. The other thing about this, the fact that data is flowing between processes, is that it's very simple and uh, conceptually fairly straightforward to move to distributed systems. Um, here's sort of an example where I'm using web sockets between two um, computers or even two VMs uh, to um, one for the client. So the, the client, these dash lines, by the way, represent just conceptual groupings in this case. But um, here's an example of how you could use this diagramming tool to be a, a little more uh, sophisticated. Uh, the first thing I want to show is the idea of a process block, which you just um, left or right click and uh, fill in a description. So I'm going to use um, read file and move that down a bit and uh, write file. And Connect it with an arrow, it fills in out and in as default port names. Now, um, this is almost a running program, which, as you can see, just copies a file. And we know that these components are available because A, they're described or mentioned a number of times in the book, and B, uh, if you have access to the Java FPP jar file, You'll see those components there. Um, however, what we have here is just process names. And um, uh, it's important to stress that these are not just blocks of code. They are running concurrently. And multiple blocks can be executing the same piece of code. So let's call this read file 2, just to make it different. The process names should be unique, but the components that they execute don't have to be. Not sure why that's doing that. Just does it occasionally. You can even connect two outputs in, into a single input like that. But according to classical FPP rules, you can't do the reverse. And the diagramming tool doesn't support that. Um, now, this idea of uh, the code being available, pre-coded, pre-tested, because the um, 
these processes don't know who their neighbors are. They only communicate by, by way of port names. Uh, the port name becomes kind of an agreement between the network definition and the inside of the component. The component says, I'm going to output data, data chunks through port out. And the network says port out is connected to port in of this component. And if you just provide the data about uh, the um, information about where the read file is supposed to get its information from, let's just delete this, go down here, and uh, you, this may not be visible, but there's a delete option right at the bottom of this list of actions. So do you want to delete this block? Yes. And we'll parameterize this by something called an initial IP, which is like a pre-coded sort of data chunk, but it is defined in the network. It uses this option here, and if you click on it, you have to give it some data, so let's call it test uh, input text or something. That will show up in a little block over here, and you need to connect it. And it'll need a port name, so we'll fill that in, and it'll default to in. And there you go. Save it. And actually, we need to save as. So I'm going to call that, you'll see why shortly, I'm going to call it word count. I could call it test. It doesn't much matter what I call it. So, but there is an existing file called word count, and I'm just going to overwrite it. This cartoon was given to me by uh, Brad Cox quite a few years ago, the inventor of uh, Objective-C. And uh, we're trying to make the point that um, componentry is something you take so much for granted in the real world that you'd be very surprised if your plumber said, oh, I don't believe in uh, components. Uh, I'd like to build everything from the ground up. And of course, um, that's what we do all the time in software. We reinvent the wheel, we reinvent the rims, the spokes, the nuts and bolts, everything. And uh, so flow-based programming is very much a component-oriented application development system. And um, uh, so you get into the whole business of how to find the components how do you catalog them? How do you learn about them? And that's just something we do routinely in other disciplines. And uh, it's clearly something we have to move towards. I'm now going to demonstrate building the whole word count application. Um, we might as well change the name um, to a save as change it to word count. And actually word count is already here, so I can just click on this and say, okay, overwrite it, and there. So it's word count. Um, we're just going to display the data, not actually write it to a file. So for now, I'm just going to change the process name to display. sort of doesn't make a lot of difference at this point since there's no component associated with it. And move it over and get rid of the, deep, the, the line, the arrow. So now we have um, to fill in the application, which is very visual. You just, uh, the first one we're going to use is a component, a process called, a component, sorry, called de decompose. Decomposes the uh, text into words, into IPs containing words. And how do I know to use this? This is where the idea of flow based programming as a discipline comes in that you know what's available and you know uh, what you might have to build yourself. And components you build yourself could be added to a library and become part of this standard. 
set of available components. So there's a process of, of in innovation, of dissemination, and education that, um, as I've said in my book, rolls around in a big circle in any real discipline. So Decompose was part of an application called the Telegram Problem that is an old chestnut. It's hard to do in conventional programming and fairly easy to do, very easy to do in Flugus programming because you just add the complementary process, Recompose, which takes the individual words and builds up records of a given length. And the, um, the point here is that what's traveling through across this line is words. Uh, sorry, I, that's a shorthand. It's IPs containing individual words. This error is going to stay. But we don't need to recompose for the purposes of this one, so I'll delete it. And we'll need a, a process which accumulates word counts. I'll call it generate. Should really be accumulate and generate word counts. And let's think of it as using a hash map to uh, keep the counts of the words. And then when the hash map is built, in other words, all the data has arrived from upstream, it puts out a stream of IPs containing word count pairs. So that's going to go here. And then you probably have to sort it because you don't really know what sequence they're coming out in. And uh, here we go. Hook it up. Out and in. And these components all actually use out and in. It's sort of default. Um, now this, I'm just going to demonstrate associating, or oh, if I uh, generate a running network from this, which I can, the only piece of information that's missing is the, the component class names for these processes. So, uh, and you get a message saying there's errors in the code, correct them. So, we'll just, I'm not sure why that happens, um, have to fix that. So we're going to um, find a component for this guy. Uh, choose component or subnet class. Um, you can either get it from the directory you're working in or from the Java FBP jar file. Uh, so I'm, for the sake of speed, I'm going to use this one. And sometimes the double click doesn't quite work. OK. OK, it does. So there we go. Um, Oh, that's interesting. There's three ports. This one, of course, is the default. And this component actually doesn't use it. It uses source. And since we didn't use source, it says that's missing. This one's connected. That's fine. This one, it doesn't know anything about. So let's change that to source. Uh, edit downstream port name, source. And well now if we do display port info, yeah, it's happy. There's source and there's out and they're both connected. And there's information about both of them. So if we, I think I said that the last selected block is always yellow, but you can turn that off by just doing that. So um, generate Java network and Read file is filled in, and in, a, in very few minutes we can fill in all the other ones, except for maybe generate word counts, which we might have to code ourselves and then fill it in. So that's it. Thank you for listening.